Right, Casper on the 14th of September 2024 and I have opened a bottle of Italian wine. Uh, I opened it some time ago actually. What are we now? It's pretty much seven o'clock. I opened this at about... Um, I think I opened it at about one o'clock and I decanted it uh, quite quite recently, uh, half an hour ago or so. It is 2010 uh, Brunello de Montalcino Filo de Seta from Castello Romatorio. So uh, it's from the north, northern sector of Montalcino. Uh, fabulous estate uh, on which they found sort of Etruscan ruins. I think there's Amer I've been there, uh, but I think there's American money in there. Um, yeah, can't remember the full story. Anyway, as you'd expect, 14.5% uh, alcohol, which is pretty standard, really, for Brunello. It's deep in colour as well. Not quite opaque. There's a narrow, narrowish band at the rim that's showing its age. It's got distinct tawniness about it, but um, let's have a look. I, I think I did a previous uh, video note on this wine. I found it was still holding quite a lot of oak. Um, uh, and it's been maybe a year since I had that. So let's have a look. Well, it's a sm smouldering dark nose. Embers and dark fruit and and bonfire toasted um, wal um, walnuts, chestnuts. This dark, dark spiced fruit. It's not exuberantly fruity, I have to say. It's, you know, there's quite a lot of other things going on in there. There's a density, there's a, there's a lift, there's a, there's a, Piquancy to it, a hint of hint of something fungal, a mushroomy character. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. That that fungal mycorrhizal aspect, biscuit tins. And the fruit is very, very dark. Interesting, interesting nose. It's got a, a fraction of something high toned about it, which I think speaks of the, the alcohol in it. But um, yeah, we're talking bramble, dark plum and fire. There's something fiery in it. Well, Pat's interesting for a number of reasons. It's it's slightly belied by the by the nose because it's got definition. It's got vim. It's got freshness. It's got a almost a wintergreen herby character that comes through, which is most unusual. It's got a, a remnant trace of oakiness to the tannins, but this minty wintergreen herbal thing is quite deep set within it. Um, and appears sort of throughout the palette. Um, nippy, nippy tannins, uh, and as I say, a proportion of those seem to uh, have come from the wood. The fruit itself comes across as really quite, quite cool, quite snappy. The finish is lively, piquant. Um, crisp um which perhaps from the nose i wasn't entirely expecting um it's uh direct it's got a finish that's a little bit a little bit almost austere a little bit too pointed at the moment whether more air will help i i don't know i mean um last night we i didn't record a tasting video for it but last night we drank a 2007 uh, barolo 
which I gave a lot of air to, and I could could I think I could have given a lot more. So I think often uh, Italian wines, particularly Barolo, um, but but perhaps this as well, just need a lot of air. I mean that Barolo last, last night, you could have I could have opened the night before I think probably or certainly in the morning, and left it in a decanter for six or seven hours, and it would have done it a power of good. It takes on a sort of deep spice, the slightly burnt crust of gingerbread. Smokiness, yeah. It's a deep mineral thrust that starts halfway through and pushes right through to the back of this wine. And it, it's part of that piquancy I was talking about. It, um, and that Finnish thing I was talking about, that slight austerity, gives the impression it's, it's not a wine that has yet fallen into shape. It's like slightly like a... One of those children's toys where you put square pegs in square holes and round pegs in round holes. It's just the square pegs are not quite square enough. They don't quite fit in the holes yet. It's um, whether it, it will come together with more air or more time in bottle. I've got I've got a quite a few more of these, and I think these two thousand and tens will be will be very long long lived. Um, I think there's. No, no hurry at all. It's changing all the time. I'll say in the in the glass, taking that ginger biscuit thing. It's a it's a kind of a wine that demands attention. I must say, um, that. Uh, the oak tannins, I, I'm slightly struggling with, um, but I think it needs obviously needs needs food. Uh, it's it's a it's a wine of presence, although it's not a not a I wouldn't call it full bodied. I'd say it was, it was very much medium weight, but it's a wine of snap and push and attention attention grabbing. Um, extraordinary label, as you'll see. Um, it's quite a thing. Um, there we are. I'm going to enjoy the rest with my supper, but um, it's it's uh, an impo slightly imposing dr quite a wine, a, dr a dramatic wine, um, and uh, wine that I needs to be thought about. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it, how it develops with more air, and I'll look forward to the next bottle, and, which I might have in another year. Um, see how that develops. But uh, in the interim, that has been 2010. Brunello de Montalcino, Filo de Seta from the Castello Romatorio. It's um it's a, a interesting thing.